Hello, my name is Chris Modi. I'm Director of Clinical Services for Heidelberg Engineering Limited. With the introduction of OCGA for the Spectralis, we need to develop a new anatomic and physiological knowledge base, as well as new terminology to describe the changes that we're observing in these new scans. Therefore, a good starting point would be to reference the histology, to develop our understanding for the technical requirements of an OCTA imaging device if we are accurately to record retinal capillary flow. It is important to remember that OCTA is only an approximation of what we see in histology, and histology cannot hope to replicate the subtleties of normal clinical anatomy and physiology. But it nonetheless makes a sensible starting point for our understanding of this new technology. The retina has one of the highest metabolic demands in terms of oxygen requirement, nutrition and elimination of waste materials of any neural tissue. The normal solution to this problem is to increase blood supply by increasing diameter or density of blood vessels. In the eye, there is a problem. Visual performance must be retained, so the normal anatomic and physiological solution does not work. Therefore, the retina has a highly adapted blood supply. Evidence of this can be seen in a multicolor image. The retinal arterioles appear as large vessels which are pale in color, denoting they contain oxygenated blood. The retinal venules are larger still in diameter and have a darker color, indicating the presence of deoxygenated blood. With multicolor imaging, it's possible to identify fourth and fifth order bifurcations in the retinal capillaries. If we zoom in, we start to appreciate the structure of the foveal avascular zone, although the foveal arcade cannot be clearly recorded. Fluorescein angiography has permitted visualization of the retinal microvasculature for over 40 years. And for the last 18 years, it has been possible to record very high resolution dynamic recordings of vascular flow and structure using the confocal scanning laser ophthalmoscope. What we're visualizing is a two dimensional projection of a three dimensional vascular structure. Therefore, it is not possible to appreciate the separate capillary plexus as unique entities within the fluorescein angiogram image. However, the foveal avascular zone can be clearly seen and the foveal arcade outlined. The integrity of the foveal arcade has allowed clinicians to gain an indication of visual performance or potential in a patient and is an important clinical feature to identify during IV fluorescein angiography. The high metabolic demand of the retina means that if blood supply is compromised, even for a short period of time, then damage occurs to the retinal tissues. This can be seen in a retinal arterial occlusion in this slide, where we can see inner retinal edema on the multicolor image, an infarcted macula on the fluorescein image, and increased reflectivity of the inner retina corresponding to inner retinal edema and ischemia on the OCT scan. The same changes can be observed in venous occlusion. Here we have a patient with a hemisphere vein occlusion and the ischemic retina can clearly be identified in the ultra wide field fluorescein image. The high magnification fluorescein angiogram again confirms the presence of macular ischemia and interruption to the foveal arcade the OCT thickness map and OCT B scan confirm the presence of macular atrophy, which is associated with the capillary non perfusion. Whilst fluorescein angiography imaging has permitted the visualization of retinal vascular flow, it is OCT that has provided unrivaled images of retinal structure. The vascular structures within the retina can be identified as hyperreflective spots which are visualized in this high magnification B scan. And this can be observed as a vascular pattern in an on-face reflectance image. 
but the microvascular structure of the capillaries is exquisitely visualized using OCTA. OCTA allows the visualization of vascular structure and recording a flow without dye injection. The retina has four distinct vascular plexus with unique morphology to meet metabolic demands of specific tissues. The peripheral region is the thickest part of the retina and the layered structure of the vascular plexus can best be observed in this location. The average size of a retinal capillary is 8 microns in diameter. This includes the lumen or blood vessel wall. The flow within the retinal capillary is approximately 6.4 microns in diameter. Therefore, the resolution of an OCTA imaging system must meet or exceed this minimum specification in order to record vascular flow and vessel patterns. The following images have been taken from a paper that appeared in IOVS in August 2012 by Tan and co-workers. This paper reviewed the histology of the microvasculature of the retina. Donor eyes were perfused and then visualized using confocal scanning laser microscopy. The four images show the structure of the microvasculature of the retina, its comparison to the anatomy, and two images using histological stains to demonstrate blood vessels and their relationship to the microglia and molar cell architecture. There is also an OCTA image included with each section. The first image looks at the retinal nerve fibre layer. Here the capillary structure runs parallel to the nerve fibre layer axons. There are small connecting capillaries and the vascular plexus is a planar or mono layer of blood vessels. Again, this can be seen clearly within the OCTA image. Within the retinal ganglion cell layer, the capillaries have a complex three-dimensional configuration and close proximity to the large arterioles and venules. There are reduced intercapillary spaces and the capillaries have a looping structure with vertical projections. The configuration of the vascular tissue reflects the high metabolic demand and blood supply of the ganglion cell layer. Again, this can be visualized exquisitely using the high magnification OCTA image. Within the deep inner plexiform superficial inner nuclear layer zone, the capillaries have an irregular pattern. There is a high degree of tortuosity, once again with 3D projections. Within the deep inner nuclear layer, the capillaries demonstrate a planar or laminar configuration. As we zoom in on the OCDA image, we can also observe a filaret pattern to the capillary plexus. So now let us look at the OCDA visualization of the four retinal vascular plexus. Within the retinal nerve fiber layer, we can visualize the arcuate distribution of the retinal capillaries and the corresponding pattern of the retinal nerve fiber layer bundles. Within the ganglion cell layer, the arterioles and venules are clearly visible and the tightly arranged capillaries have a close proximity to these major vessels. The capillaries within the inner plexiform inner nuclear layer have a tortuous pattern with vertical vascular projections connecting to the deeper capillary plexus. The final capillary plexus within the retina is the inner nuclear layer outer plexiform zone. The capillaries in this location are a single planar plexus of capillaries, again with vertical projections connecting to the capillary plexus above. The capillaries have a classic floret appearance to them. In summary, Perifoveal capillaries demonstrate unique morphology according to the retinal layer. 
The greatest capillary density is in the retinal ganglion cell layer, superficial inner plexiform layer, and in the deep inner plexiform and superficial inner nuclear layers. This reflects metabolic demand of these tissues. Capillary looping is seen least in the retinal nerve fibre layer and the retinal ganglion cell layer. All the capillaries within the retina have a uniform capillary diameter. The avascular tissues still maintain high oxygen tension within the retina and the role of the microglia and muller cells is closely linked to microvascular structure and flow. Understanding retinal vascular structure and flow is the key to understanding retinal pathophysiology. OCTA may be the key, but it must meet the demands of resolving this fine microvascular structure.